Erwin Smith reflects his title of commander in all aspects. His strong features, his imposing frame standing at 6 foot 2, hunter eyes and a full head of hair, even his voice and body language all radiate confidence. But beyond his appearance, he possesses all the qualities a leader should have, and today we're going to dive deep into the 4 skills that make him the most successful as a leader. Now at the most basic level we have the ability of strategic thinking. This is one of the most essential skills of a true leader. You can be as charismatic or headstrong as you want, but if you can't think outside the box in high pressure situations, you will eventually meet an obstacle that will be immovable through pure will. One of the greatest examples of Irwin's ability to improvise, adapt, and overcome came in Season 3 where Irwin organized a coup d'etat to overthrow the corrupt government and fake king by staging a fake titan attack on the city. It looked like this. Your sentence is death. Walrose has fallen! The gates have been breached! I want every last gate to all Cena closed off! Not a single refugee will be allowed inside this wall! But all those people... Everyone in Walrose will die! Just as you think Irwin is going to be sentenced to death, his ingenious is shown by his plan to test the government officials' loyalty towards the people through a fake titan attack. Since they turned their backs and chose to close the gates, their true intentions were exposed. Given the scenario you were presented with, your choice to close Cena's gates broke Clause 6 of the Charter of Humanity. <gasps> Furthermore, you installed a puppet king in order to seize the reins of power for yourselves. This crime is known as treason. And all of the soldiers saw that Irwin was right about the government all along. Without his creative thinking, he would have surely been sent to his death. Irwin also proves his extraordinary strategic thinking on the battlefield when it really counts the most. In episode 17, Irwin comes up with a very clever scouting formation to lead his group against the Titans. Long range formation! Let's go! The long range scouting formation is a forward facing semicircle. We'll be positioned relative to one another at equal intervals within view of signal fire on all sides. The idea is to extend our spotting at signal range as far as possible. By splitting up and using different smoke signals to relay information, he gave them a better chance at survival rather than just running into the fight blindly as many others would have done. Now we all might not be up to date on the strategies of war, but what we can easily work on is our ability to motivate others. And that's the next skill, and it looks a little bit like this. Getting your arm bitten by a giant monster is surely one of the most excruciating pains you can imagine. But in order to be a great leader, you must be able to ignore anything that distracts from the objective and remain focused on the ultimate goal. In this case, defeating the Titans. Not only does this inspire the rest of the squad to be as resilient as him, but it also shows a false equivalency. That not even losing one of your arms is worth retreating or abandoning the mission. If he was to cry out in pain, or scream for help, it would have certainly broke the will of the survey corps and the casualties would have been much higher. But this show of unbreakable will in the face of adversity gave the rest of the squad the extra fire in their belly to defeat the titans thoroughly. One of my other favorite examples of Irwin's ability to motivate is the scene where he weaponizes his tonality to rally the troops. Go out there and take back Lamaria for us! <laughs> His voice startles the squadron by going from silent to booming in an instant. It grabs your attention immediately. When you use a loud, intimidating voice only from time to time, it makes your quiet, motive interaction just as frightening as your booming tone. They never know when you're going to switch. If you're loud all the time, the value is lost. But when the lion roars, the whole jungle hears. Now the next sign of a highly skilled leader is recognizing strengths and weaknesses. Not only in others, but also yourself. This is how Irwin handled it when faced with the decision of who the Titan Serum should be used on. But to whom do we entrust it? To you, Evan? 
No. With my wound, I would be a poor choice. This syringe, it belongs in the hands of one of our elite. Someone with the best odds of survival. A normal person in Erwin's position would probably want to take the serum themselves for its strength and benefits, especially if you're already in a weakened state. Levi, will you accept it? Judging when to use it and on whom will be your responsibility. Will you accept it? As a leader, you can't expect to make every decision. You need to be able to recognize when someone has a strength that outweighs your own for the betterment of the whole operation. Erwin delegates the decision to Levi because he was able to set his ego aside and realize that if he were to take the serum, it could go to waste. A choice that ultimately leads Levi to choosing to give the serum to Armin instead of Erwin. Not because he was a superior choice, but to send his respected commander off in glory, honor, and sacrifice, the way that Erwin certainly would want it all to end. A true leader understands his weaknesses and surrounds himself with individuals who can make up for them. Let's see how Erwin utilizes this skill on the battlefield. Join Klaus' squad and protect the horses at the gate! Levi's squad and Hanji squad! I need you to take down the armored titan! Employ the Thunder Spears at your own discretion! In this scene, we see Erwin make quick, high-risk decisions about who will be doing what tasks in a very high-pressure situation. The ability to do those only comes from understanding people's strengths, but just as impressive is his ability to see the potential in seemingly normal people. Not only did he recruit the greatest soldier humanity has ever seen in Levi, but he also ended up with a literal titan under his command and that only further gave him strength to seek the truth. It's highly likely he understood that he had the best possible chance of uncovering the truth with the lineup of scouts that he had with two Ackermans, Armin, the kid genius, and Aaron the Titan, and it resulted in him finally putting them in a position to find the truth. Now this finally takes us to the deepest layer of leadership, and that is the mindset that I am willing to lose. Now this may sound counterintuitive, but when the bigger picture is worth it, you have to be willing to take the risk, and in this case, Erwin paid the ultimate price. Be honest, are all of us riding to our deaths? Yes, we are. Everything that you thought had meaning, every hope, dream, or moment of happiness, none of it matters as you lie bleeding out on the battlefield. None of it changes what a speeding rock does to a body. In my opinion, this is one of the single greatest moments in anime history. At death's door, when the natural instinct is to tuck tail and run, how did he convince them to charge anyways? A lot of the members of the Survey Corps were new recruits and he had to convince them to die alongside himself. Well, as a leader, it's your responsibility to align the motives of the others. And the best way to do this is by painting a vivid picture of what they stand to gain versus what they stand to lose. We all die. But does that mean our lives are meaningless? Does that mean that there was no point in our being born? Would you say that of our slain comrades? They were not! Their memory serves as an example to us all! The courageous fallen! The anguished fallen! Their lives have meaning because we, the living, refuse to forget them! Giving up and dying a meaningless death, or raging forward towards certain death, giving meaning to your life, those that fought before, and those who will fight after. Because my soldiers do not buckle or yield when faced with the cruelty of this world! My soldiers push forward! My soldiers scream out! My soldiers rage! Many so-called leaders would have sat back in a bunker, sending the Survey Corps off to their death. But as a true leader, you lead by example. In that moment, he proved he cared more about the dream than his own life, and that he was willing to do what was necessary to fulfill it even if he'd never see it happen. And I understand if you find it hard to imagine how the willingness to lose it all could be useful in the real world, not just some anime. I encourage you to look at the story of Elon Musk, the CEO of Tesla and SpaceX who now has a net worth of over $200 billion. It wasn't always this case. In 2008, SpaceX had three failed rocket launches and a fourth failed launch would have ended in termination of the project and bankruptcy. As I said, for, for SpaceX, the first three launches failed, just barely able to scrape together enough parts and, and money to do the, the fourth launch. 
If that fourth launch had failed, we would have been dead. But yet, he bet on himself and was willing to fail. And luckily, it was a success and now SpaceX is focusing on colonizing Mars. Irwin shows us that it takes much more than just physical prowess to become a great leader. The leaders that stand out are those who can think far beyond themselves and remain cool under immense pressure. You must be able to motivate and align different people with different minds with one united goal. And that is what separates true leaders from the phonies. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe, turn the notifications on, and until next time, goodbye.